Well, some people gave me a hard time for not taking what I deemed to be the most comfortable car ever, or at least one of the most comfortable cars ever, for a drive. So we're going to do that in this video after this little quick walk around to refresh everyone's memory. This is my 1973 Mercury Marquis Brome hardtop coupe, one of about 25,000 made and finished in ginger glamour metallic. And because it was an extra cost glamour metallic paint, it has those painted wheel covers. And yes, there are a number of cars that one could deem comfortable. Uh, a number of people mentioned Citroëns and yes, they are most certainly comfortable, particularly with their hydro pneumatic suspension. But this is an affordable classic that a normal people can afford to maintain and still get parts for. Those Citroëns, you got to find a special mechanic and they're pretty costly, although they are very cool. I also think the Twin Comfort lounge seats in this personally are more comfortable than the seats in the Citroën, albeit the suspensions are great. And they, in fact, they were so great that Bentley and Rolls-Royce even used them for a number of years. In any case, let's take this Mercury out for a drive. Well, here we are in the Marquis Rome, going for a little spin. This car is so comfortable. It just makes it a total pleasure to drive. Absolutely straight on the wheel. The amazing thing about these, especially compared to the GM cars, even the coupes of the era is, there's about a foot of distance between here and the roof. That's it. It's a pretty gun slit cabin, which was typical for the Fords of the year if you got the hard top. Unless you got the pillared sedans, they have pretty low roof lines and pretty high belt lines. It feels much more cramped in and intimate than a GM car of the period, or the, especially the Chrysler fuselage. I think Chrysler had a mandate that you had to be able to wear a hat driving the car. I mean, all the roof lines generally were pretty high in them. Maybe aside from a few muscle cars, but the full-size cars definitely had quite elevated roof lines that were still very elegant. This car is a very low roof line and a high belt line, as I mentioned. Acceleration, yes, this is a 73. It's detuned. It does have the cam timing gear that's retarded by 6 degrees. You have to replace the cam gear. You can uh, switch it out with a earlier 70s set like from 71 and pick up a little few 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 horsepower but this one's not lacking in power at all i mean i don't drive this car the 73s or fours you know to me seem still pretty peppy once you get to 75 and six in particular those seem a little bit more boggy this is a very pleasant driving car plenty of acceleration power goes 80 miles an hour all day long down the freeway barely touching the pedal it's only you know in the low 200 horsepower but tons of torque and you really drive torque so when you step on the accelerator off the line you really don't have to push much to get it going at a reasonable speed just an overall very 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 pleasant driving car I think the interior looks still rich. I mean, are the materials the same as are the materials the same as the earlier '70s cars or you know the '60s era? No, but they're still really good. I mean, this door panel is a nice door panel. These Twin Comfort lounge seats. Oh my gosh, you can't get anything like this in a car anymore. Every car has very hard seats. Oftentimes, many cars have the exact same seat frame, just a little bit different design because it costs so much now to validate seat testing that automakers will use the same seat in everything. I drove a GMC Denali Yukon, rented one, and the seat is basically the same as what's in the Equinox. And to me, it's very uncomfortable. You don't get these seats anymore with the really long thigh bolsters everybody's trying to skimp and the thigh bolsters in particular especially if you're a taller person like i am 
uh, they're just not long enough. You don't get any thigh support, and it's really annoying. This car, if you were five foot, you know, under five foot five, under five foot six, I don't even know if you could sit in the seat. Your legs would have to be stretched out. The thigh bolster is so long. It's probably too long. But if you're taller, it's great. And you sit, you know, these don't have a telescoping wheel, but I'm about 6'1". I have the seat quite a ways back and it's really comfortable. So overall, just great experience. Easy to read instruments. Same instrument cluster as the Ford, a little bit different top pad, a little bit different dash fence, but very similar. As I mentioned in the main video, these cars are super comfortable. Really the only issues that I find with them are the plastic gears and the window motors. The window motors are fine, but the torque pins wear out and then you push the button, you hear the motor spinning and nothing happening. Not a horrible repair. You gotta take the door panel off. Sometimes you have to drill a few holes to get the motor out, but it can be done. Tony Lawler of Tony's Car Care in Vandalia, Illinois. Tony also has a channel where he shows you how to do it. I'll put a, put a link to Tony's channel. It's called Tony's Car Care in the description. Be sure to check it out and subscribe. That's one major issue. The other are the carburetors on these. These Motorcraft 4300s are just really not good, but you know, if all else fails, you can just put a different carburetor on. Put an Edelbrock or a Holley, no issue. I still run the original ones in most of them, although I will say that if the car came with a Holley or Edelbrock when I bought it, even though they gave me the original, I haven't changed them back. So that kind of tells you how I feel about them. These motorcrafts, you kind of tip in on the throttle and doesn't have a lot of, you know, response until you get about a third of the way in. And then at that point, the power piston starts kicking in and richens the mixture and a lot more throttle response but I richen the jets in these by about two to four thousandths and it really really helps the part throttle tip in they just were jetted very lean from the factory and the accelerator pump design is not a great design on these either often they're dead they don't work sometimes you can get lucky by squirting a little WD-40 at the top of the accelerator pump and cycling it a few times while the car is off and bringing it back to life that'll work temporarily but you really have to replace the pump cup by taking the top of the carburetor off. But nonetheless, I mean, usually these cars have really robust air conditioning systems. This one still works great. It's just a beautiful day, so I got the windows down. The heating systems are great. They don't make HVAC systems like this anymore. Really hot heat, gets warm fast. I mean, this isn't an overly efficient engine, so it rejects quite a bit of heat. Although, you know, people will say this thing passes anything but a gas station. It's really not that bad. I get, I would say around town, the, the around town mileage is not good. Probably eight to 10 miles per gallon. But on the freeway, 14, 15, if I keep it to 70, 75 miles an hour, if I keep it to 65, I can get 15, 16. Which considering that this car has a three speed automatic, no lockup torque converter, points ignition, carburetor, is totally unaerodynamic. I mean, that's pretty remarkable, to be honest. I, I really don't think it's that bad. So, in any case, if you find one of these Mercury Marquis, especially the Brome trims for sale, they're hard to find now, but if you find one, I highly recommend snatching it up. You're not gonna be disappointed. Thankfully, I bought my fair share of them, so it's time to spread the word and evangelize uh, and let people know how great these cars are. Everybody likes the GTOs and Chargers and Mustangs, and I do too, but my God, this car is just great. You get all the creature comforts, power steering, power windows, air conditioning, AM, FM, A-Track in this case, power seats. Crazy about a Mercury. Thanks for watching. And here we are on the freeway with the windows up. Wonderfully quiet. Super comfy, 
pleasant place to be. What a great freeway cruiser. Thanks again for watching. conditioning on. Nice and cool in here. This car has been retrofitted and these two piston York compressor systems seem to respond pretty well to the retrofit. It's pleasantly cool in here. The only thing about this car that I wish were a bit different, you do have this vent blowing at you. I like air conditioning blowing on my face, as strange as that sounds. This vent you can direct right at you. It's a little hard to get that one over there. There's no vent here, but kind of got it angled just about right so that it also blows on me. Just thought I'd mention that. Thanks for watching this ride along of the 1973 Marquis. Thanks for watching this ride along of the 1973 Mercury Marquis Brome. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as that helps the YouTube algorithm serve it up to more viewers like you. And until next time, check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right. And check out Tony's Car Care, the YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about how to replace the window torque pins in your Ford window motors. Thanks again for watching.